got it. Welcome, everyone. We are the Board of Trustees from the Wikimedia Foundation, and we are here to have a chat with Wikiconference North America. This is the 11th edition of Wikiconference North America. So happy to have you all here. My cue card says there are over 300 attendees over the course of the three days. We're into day number two, well, actually number three, if you count our culture crawl. So that's a whole lot of people. So this session is an opportunity for us, the Wikimedia Board of Trustees, to have a conversation with you to hear what's on your mind, to hear your questions, your comments, and your ideas. I'll start, I guess, with an introduction about me. So my name, Rosie Stevenson Goodnight. I've been a member of the Board of Trustees for about two and a half years, and I've been a member of uh, the Wikimedia uh, volunteer uh, population since 2007. This is meant to be an interactive session. We're glad that you've come with questions and ideas, and we want to hear them. But first, we're going to start with an introduction, and then a short panel discussion here on the stage, and then the second half is devoted to the open Q&A. The other trustees on the stage with me are going to introduce themselves, and I'm also going to give you a quick intro regarding the board and how our work impacts the movement, including this, the North American community which is near and dear to my heart. Then we'll go into a short panel discussion with a few open questions about the crossroads facing North America. Then we'll open up the floor for audience questions and a larger conversation with you. So let's get to the introductions. Raju, do you want to introduce yourself next? Uh, sure. Uh, Raju Narisati, I'm a nominated or appointed board member I've been on the board for this my seventh uh, year now. I'm based in New York. This may be the 11th, but this is the best. You know why? Because I went to Indiana University. You're all here. So welcome. Hi, I'm Kathy Collins. I am the newest trustee. I was appointed in December of 2023. Um, one of the appointed trustees. I'm also chair of the audit committee and one of two vice chairs of the board. I live in Houston, Texas, and um, retired recently from Rice University, where I had been for about 27 years. Um, thank you. Let me just add that I'm a native-born Hoosier. I was born in Gary, Indiana. Oh, no. All right, recognizing that there are some people here in the audience who maybe aren't familiar with the Board of Trustees or the Wikimedia Foundation, I guess that's humanly possible. I'm going to talk about how the board is structured and what we do. Let's see if I can do this correctly. There you go. Trust the slides. Well, that one's not advancing, so apologies. Let me give it to Elena. Would you take care of it? Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thanks. All right. So there are 12 um, trustees on our board. Six of us have been elected by you. Five have been selected, um, including both Raju and Kathy, um, because of the specialty areas that you two have. And then one seat is reserved for Jimmy, Jimmy Wales, our founder. The breakdown gives us both a professional background and community expertise. It's not necessarily typical of nonprofit boards to have such a large community presence, but here for us, Wikimedia, it is. And that's why we ensure decisions are rooted in what the community needs as well as what the organization needs. So what does the board do? You got the golden touch, Raju. 
The goal of a nonprofit board is to provide oversight and strategy for an organization and its leadership. Notice I didn't say the word operations. In terms of oversight, a board has a fiduciary or fiscal and legal responsibility. This means that we review and approve the annual plan and the budget, and we help the organization set its priorities and its annual plan goals. We also get regular reports on progress towards the annual plan goals from leadership. Boards like ours also typically work closely with the CEO, you heard on the first day from Mariana Iskander, to develop a longer term strategy that supports the vision of our organization. Boards such as ours are also involved in strategy. Again, not day to day operations. All right, so let's kick off the panel discussion. We would like to invite some people to join us. Selena, Lisa from the Foundation's Leadership, come join us please and help answer some of the questions with us about the Foundation's current work. And then um, to moderate what we're gonna do, Elena, would you come and join the panel too? Thanks. All right, take it from here, Elena. Okay, let's get going. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so as the theme of this conference is crossroads, meaning the intersection of paths that hadn't crossed before or turning points, moments of decision, I thought we could have some questions to the panel in that spirit um, and understanding how the idea of crossroads is showing up in the foundation's work and in the board's work overseeing the foundation. Um, so for my first question, I'd like to ask you, Raju, you've been here sitting through talks for the last two days. And I'm curious um, what crossroads you've heard about facing the North American community and how you're gonna bring back that knowledge and what you've learned from those conversations into your work on the board. Thank you, and keeping with the crossroads theme, uh, two things. One uh, which is uh, very encouraging and very promising, and the second one which is a little bit of a question mark that we'll take back and kind of want to talk a little bit about it. The, the first part is like, it's amazing to see how everybody is really, really committed to making sure that we do, you know, the Wiki projects the right way. I sat in on a couple of sessions. Uh, one was uh, Mark's uh, Internet Archives, and it's astounding, like, they, and I wrote down the numbers. Um, they're fixed, um, working with the editors and the archives, uh, we fixed 22.2 million broken links in 467 wikis, right? I mean, that's a very important thing to continue to kind of really ad address that, uh, how effective our links are. They've added 2.7 million links to references that were there but didn't have links. And then I sat in on um, another session which is really around how do you prevent article quality decline? Right. And that's a, it's a fairly profound topic, right? Because understanding quality and making sure that you don't set up a page so that it starts declining. And that was by um, user SDKB. So the passion with which everybody wants to solve problems is great and whatever we can do from a foundation and a, a board point of view to support that. Right? And that's always the most fun part of being at a conference like this. The second one is a little bit more long term. Um, those of you who uh, attended Mariana's presentation about future audiences, right? We heard that um, surveys, a few survey shows that 40% of young people get their news from TikTok. But the reality is 40% don't get their news from TikTok. They happen to be on TikTok. That's where news is being served to them, right? So it's a very subtle but fundamental Difference. So I think it's very important for us because for 20 plus years, the fundamental belief of the Wiki projects is that if you do it the right way, people will come to us. I think we have to start asking, how can we take this to where they are? Not, ex not kind of, we should try to get them to us, of course, right? But so those are the bigger, broader questions that the board always tends to think about it. As uh, Rosie said, we are a board that focuses more on strategy and not operations. So that's the kind of questions that I'll also take back. I mean, in this entire uh, conference, I think there's one 
uh, high schooler, I think he's 11th grader. Um, we should be having a lot more. If you're gonna talk about future audiences, it just can't be us thinking about them. They should be participating, right? So those are the kind of things I'm taking away. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I've got a question for you, Kathy, as the finance chair of the board. Um, we've talked a lot in recent annual plans at the foundation about the concept of trade-offs, and it, it showed up today in your session as well, Selena. Um, but part of what we, what we have to reckon with in the, in the trade-offs department is around finances. Over the past couple of years, um, the budget of the foundation has stabilized, growth has slowed, and that's meant really taking a hard look at trade-offs, and that leaves us at a crossroads. And now we're kind of venturing into this new system of funds dissemination. Um, so I'm wondering what you see as some of the critical junctures ahead of us when it comes to the future of community funding and the future of grants given the financial situation we're in now. Thank you. Um, so I think a couple of points I would make. One is that um, the budget does grow year over year. Um, the foundation is a very good steward of, a, of building balanced budgets to live within projected revenues. And the revenues for the year just ended were up about 5%. And, um, the FY25 budget assumes similar growth. And so there, it's good that revenues are growing um, at that pace um, and um, that the budget is not flat, but there's a lot to accomplish within that envelope of, of funds and the choices between um, the product and tech and grants and, and administrative support. So over time, if you go back five years, the grant budget has increased continually. Um, in fiscal year 21, it was $8 million. It has grown to 20 million, just a tad over 20 million, so almost three times in this current fiscal year budget. So I think that's an impressive point to keep in mind of the foundation's effort to continue to grow grants even as the overall budget growth has slowed. Another point is that um, there is the um, intention, beginning with the FY25 budget, of trying to give preliminary estimates for year two and year three, as opposed to just looking at one year at a, at a time. And so that adds a planning aspect. So I think, you know, when the crossroads, if you will, is, is how dis dissemination decisions will get made. Um, and that the foundation in its budgeting, I think, um, sees the importance of continuing to grow grants, not, you know, um, by leaps and bounds because of the overall budget constraint. But even in the 25 budget, grants are going at a slightly higher rate of increase than the overall budget. So I think the, the real decisions come at how to put that money to good use, both in, from an equitable standpoint and an impact standpoint. Thanks, Kathy. Lisa, I don't know if you wanna introduce yourself and also weigh in on this question and maybe talk a little bit more about the pilot around funds dissemination and what some choices lay, are that lay ahead. Sure, I'm Lisa Gruwell, um, and I'm the Chief Advancement Officer at the, at the, at the Foundation. Um, and then I also hold a role as President of the Wikimedia Endowment. Um, and those might be the two things when I think about crossroads that come, come to mind, as, as Elena mentioned. Um, we're having a discussion right now about how grants are made and how, how th those budgets across the regions might be allocated differently and how we can decentralize that decision making even more uh, so that it is it's more of a community process than it even is now um, I know Ben is ben, ben is here Ben tomorrow is holding um, a session to get feedback on on a proposal um, there's also a very similar uh, uh, session happening at Wikimedia in Daba this weekend in Johannesburg so we're getting kind of feedback on that proposal all around the world and are gonna kind of 
take all of that in and, and, and refine the proposal based on your input. So be sure to go to Ben's session if that's something that interests you. Um, and then I'll just say, uh, you know, the Wikimedia endowment's not something we talk about a ton, um, but we started the endowment back in 2015 with a, a gift from one of our donors who, who passed away and he left us his entire estate. Um, his name was Jim Pecha, he's an aerospace engineer, self-educated from Colorado, and he said, hey, you can do what you want with this, but I'd really like it if you'd start an endowment. And so we did, and that has grown now to, um, you know, we just ended at 144 million. Um, a lot of people are making gifts just like the one Jim did through what's called planned giving. And, you know, two years ago, we were at, a, I guess, a crossroads, right, with the endowment where we got to a point where now the endowment is now making grants itself, right? So, you know, for a long time, we were just growing it. But now the endowment is funding um, uh, particular work. And right now, the work is focused on technical innovation of the Wikimedia projects. So funding um, uh, so, some of the work in Selena's department, as well as QX. Um, and some of, some of their projects to reach people offline. So uh, those are the two things that come to mind for me when we talk about crossroads and talk about the financial sustainability. And I would just say that I think for our crossroads, we try not to look at what's immediately ahead of us, but are trying to get the foundation and the movement on a place financially where we're really thinking much longer term. And the endowment is definitely a part of that. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so we've got also a, a crossroads question for product and tech, surprise, surprise, which of course is a big ticket item uh, at this conference and with North American communities, as you all know very well. Um, so I'm curious about the crossroads product and tech. Uh, there are many that actually we've discussed already in these last two days. Um, but the product, I'm curious about the product and tech advisory council, which I've heard mentioned um, in a few instances. Um, that emerged as a continuation of the movement strategy recommendations um, as a way to like carry forward community participation in product and tech decisions. So I'm wondering if you could talk about what problems the council aims to serve, to, to, to solve, and um, a little bit about the work ahead that you see for the council. Yeah, thanks, Selena. Hi, everybody. I'm Selena Deckelman. I'm the Chief Product and Technology Officer for the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and the journey that I went on around the Product and Tech Advisory Council started a little before the Singapore Wikimania. Several months before that, the uh, Movement Charter Drafting Committee had reached out to me to ask what I thought about this one line about having a technology uh, decision-making body that was in um, the original movement strategy. And so uh, I had a series of conversations um, with the Movement Charter Drafting Committee, with the Product and Technology Committee of the Wikimedia Foundation Board, and I came up with a series of proposals because um, uh, that you know we've now published um, on Meta, and you can see that proposal there if you'd like. Uh, so you know it was through that we were trying to think of ways to be directly engaging. Um, with volunteers in thinking about kind of middle-term and long-term strategic decisions about how we were going to invest and then like drive projects forward for the um, product and technology department, basically. Um, what I think this group, and just to say, we're kind of, we're getting close to being able to like pull um, that group together. We've got maybe like another week and a half or two weeks worth of work left to do. The process was to ask for people to apply, do a series of interviews. There's actually a few of you here that I know have um, uh, applied. So thank you, everyone. We ended up getting more than 50 applications, some of which publicized like who they were um, on Meta. And we, talking with them all and kind of figuring out a distribution of folks who can represent the global north, the global south, or the global majorities groups, and also making sure that we're getting representation across a lot of different wiki communities, which we thought would be really important. 
Um, so yeah, so in terms of like the kinds of things, we're really gonna be trying to think about the middle and long-term type decisions. So things having to do you know, with trade-offs that we might need to make um, to support certain sister projects. There are some really big decisions that need to be made, and I think that those are ones that should be made together. Uh, and one of the questions that I asked everybody that I interviewed, um, you know, one of them was like, what do you think we, the purpose of the Wikimedia Foundation is? And we just had like a really great conversation about that. And I also asked them to talk to me about a time that their mind was changed about something. Because I think as I'm bringing people together, they're coming in with really different points of view. And one of the challenges that we face is creating a collaborative group that can make decisions together. So anyway, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing that and moving forward with like what hopefully will be a fun and interesting onboarding. And then we'll start to dig in and do some real work. Great, thanks for that. So we'd like to open the floor up to any of you to ask questions. We've got two mics, one in each uh, aisle here. If you wanna approach the mic and ask a question, we'd be happy to take it. We've got about 35 minutes left in the session. Yeah, you can also raise your hand if you want it hand delivered to you. Hi, uh, my name is Andy. I've been editing Wikipedia probably for more than 10 years, but really seriously for the past two years. Um, I'm here today as the ally of 32 native tribes and nations. I came partially to Wikiconference to learn things that I can bring back to them, and also partially to try to share their plight. Um, now I'm going to read a letter from uh, Bernard. He's the chairman of the Lipan Apache tribe of Texas. Um, hello, Wikipedia Board of Trustees. I am Bernard Barcina, chairman of the, Le the Lipan Apache Tribe of Texas. Today, I am representing all Native American people, individuals, tribes, and Native communities purposefully marginalized on Wikipedia and presenting to you a complaint letter signed by 32 representatives of Native American tribes and organizations throughout the country. As leaders, we are the voice for the tens of thousands of people in our communities. Our complaint letter will demonstrate that there are attempts to erase our communities and people as Native Americans through information on Wikipedia. I'm presenting copies of the complaint to the board. On behalf of all the Native nations, the small group of Wikipedia editors targeted, we ask, what will, Nat what will Wikipedia do about this pervasive misinformation campaign? Misinformation against, uh, about Native people on Wikipedia. Thank you. All right, great. Got a copy for everyone. Andy, thank you. I know that uh, there are people watching us but can't really ask a question because of the format. Um, thank you for doing this. Um, we'll take it back to the both uh, the CEO of uh, the foundation as well as the staff and also to the board and um, make sure that all the right people uh, look into this. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm not going to use the mic. No. No, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Are, 
Um, it will automatically delete all of your edits up to that point that day and not tell you why. Um, so, yeah, that's a problem, right? So, we can't fix it. Also, um, if we could get some sort of like diplomacy, if we have representatives of these smaller communities and have them have a straight channel to the board and just say, hey, we are representing these folks and we don't know where to go. I mean, they do know maybe, but it's been difficult to figure out the bureaucracy and who to ask these things. I happen to have my problem solved simply because I paid the money to come to the conferences. So glad I did that. But a lot of groups don't have that resource. Um, then we also like to see how we can get, um, we're going to be editing and find ways to support new and marginalized communities that may be facing these types of problems. If there is some board member who could say, hey, if you're a member of these types of communities and you're having folks deleting your stuff, but they don't know what they're doing, and you do, or having edit wars, or having people say that you have a conflict of interest when you do not, it would be great to sort of have a direct channel to the board for these things for a member or a representative of our community. Thank you. So my initial goal was to try to summarize this into the mic, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do all of this justice. Um, but you've brought up some really important issues and questions around um, behavior on the projects in particular around minority groups. Um, I don't know if anybody up here wants to, you know, weigh in quickly on any of these questions that were brought up. I'll start and then maybe pass it for more technical uh, details to you, Selena. So, Dina, thank you for your question. I'm familiar with your work, with your the group that you represent, and I'm delighted that you're back here at Wiki Conference North America again. I understand what you're saying, that small groups of editors who try to work on a focus group of, of articles can sometimes encounter um, problems. I'm aware of some particular problems that your group has encountered just because your work is so relatively new and exciting in that kind of a way. Uh, I need to make it clear that as a board, we don't do deal in any operational kinds of issues, but what we can do is give support in, in terms of like a strategic way of thinking that we need to um, provide support to newer editors and find a way to integrate them so that they understand maybe some of the ins and outs that perhaps they didn't. And we also need to have an understanding, better understanding of how the bot that you were describing, I'm not sure exactly which bot, but maybe Selena will know how that may have um, affected the, uh, the articles that you said that had some deletion either in whole or in part. So let me just, if, if you don't mind, let me just pass this over to Selena to, to answer the, uh, some more of what Dina was asking. Yeah, maybe if you can pass a mic. Um, there, there's one missing mic, and then there's another mic over, over there. I'm afraid if I go down the stairs, I might fall ungracefully. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so um, when it comes to, Dina, I think um, I'd just love to like sit down with you and have you show me exactly what it is. There are many, many bots, so um, I, I don't know exactly which one, so I don't have a comment on that, uh, but I'm happy to have a look at it. And then uh, just, yeah, just, I think Rosie, uh, you know, brought up a lot, a lot of what we do when it comes to editorial decisions that are being made by bots or by humans on the wikis is we try to connect people to the right communities, connect people with others that can help. Um, and yeah, then I'm happy, I'm happy to do that in whatever way I can, especially here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just, I did a little digging on the subject and found that Goodreads, which um, this person mentioned, is listed as an unreliable source on English Wikipedia by the community under the, the um, perennial sources board, which is generally the master list for these sorts of things. And that decision was made in 2018. Now, if you're, what was the, did they say again, that they said that there are 
sources were primarily on Goodreads for some reason? It, I don't think it was primarily, but that is a possible one. So it sounds like there might either be like, yeah, go, but go on. Um, I would suggest, because as the board does not generally uh, handle content issues, those are handled by the communities, that if that is a subject of concern, that that decision is uh, limiting sources that are reliable otherwise, but don't have a home elsewhere, uh, then that discussion should probably be held on the perennial sources uh, board with uh, those remarks in mind. Do you have any, yeah. does the original person who brought up have any uh, reply to that? I was going to say, I, I'm not sure I heard the whole of that, but if what you were saying is could you have a diplomat who would have a source um, and come and speak directly with the board since we've explained that this is an operations issue dealing with content on um, a particular project, in this case English Wikipedia, it wouldn't be appropriate to have like that kind of an avenue because then everyone who has a project and has an issue would be entitled to have such a diplomat. On the other hand, you and I are connected via email and there's that when I'm wearing my volunteer hat, well, I'm a volunteer all the way around. So um, it's a moot point in that you and I do have a relationship, um, but in general, no, it's not something that the board can take on and it would be something um, dealing with content, so it would be a community issue. I don't know if you wanted to add something, Lisa, or no, okay. And I think with the, the vantage point that the board and foundation leadership have too, is like, you know, a really good view on who's doing amazing work in the community. And so what Selena mentioned totally holds of like, you know, they may not be able to help you directly with a particular behavioral issue with a particular editor or set of editors on the projects, but they know a lot of really, really amazing volunteers doing great work that they can help connect you with. So there's always that as well. Yeah, Chris. Testing, testing, thank you. Uh, Chris Schilling from the Wikimedia Foundation Community Resources Team. Um, one idea I've heard from, or one kind of common issue I've heard among many communities uh, and affiliates in the movement is um, folks trying to work in areas of marginalized knowledge, having difficulty with finding secondary sources with which to be able to generally contribute in those topical areas. Uh, there are some user groups interested in this topic as well and have made some efforts to, for example, one such user group the Women in Religion user group has um, been able to connect publishers and authors in some of those areas together to create secondary sources in some of these topical areas. Uh, another idea I've heard from a conference participant is um, rather ambitious, but it's the prospect of the Wikimedia Foundation itself being a publisher of works of mar like on marginalized topics that are kind of community identified. Um, I was interested in hearing from the board uh, and others on stage, of course, too, um, if there were any sort of initial impressions around uh, this uh, sort of, you know, lofty proposal, but um, this kind of direction uh, for the foundation to move in, which currently is not a publisher of, of secondary sources, of course, but uh, it could be. Um, and um, this would, you know, could be one approach to resolve some of these wider, uh, movement-wide issues around the availability of secondary sources in a number of sort of areas of marginalized knowledge. So I'm sorry, to be clear, the, what I'm sort of interested in is initial impressions from the board or others on stage around uh, this potential direction for the foundation to move in. Uh I'll give a philosophical answer to this question and not specific to this issue. 
I think the role of the foundation is to make sure that we are supporting the commons and the and the availability of sources out in the, uh, the grants actually help do a lot of that. I think from a board point of view and a foundation point of view, our best resources are, I think, are deployed against those kind of make sure that the commons are doing well and then feeding into the community so that they can be cited rather than kind of become a creator of content because it has all sorts of wicked problem effects. Um, because I think where you put a thumb disproportionately impacts what gets sourced and not. So I think it has all sorts of interesting challenges. I think we are much better off like when we raise, through Lisa's group, raise the money to kind of make sure that we are giving grants to people who can then support the content creation. Lisa, I don't know if you want to add. Yeah, I would just say, I mean, I mean, I think one, the work of the, the group, you know, that I just learned about at this conference of, of the women in religion um, work is incredible. So I, I, I don't know if there's, if that's something that could be scaled or if there's best practices to learn there that others could. But I will say, I mean, you know, publishing, publishers are struggling, right? I think community newspapers, local newspapers, um, you know, papers that, or just publications that, that are supporting, um, you know, co covering communities, marginalized communities are, are, you know, going out of business left and right, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult ecosystem. And as Raju said, I think it makes more sense for us to support um, what's already built out there that's struggling and needs, needs help than, than build something ourselves. And that's, we have done some of that, right? That, that was part of the equity, the Knowledge Equity Fund initiative. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a big problem though. Right, I, I, I actually think it's bigger than us. And luckily, there, are, you know, it's an area in philanthropy that some big players are really involved in, such as the Knight Foundation and, and some others. Um, and I think supporting and linking that kind of work is, is critical, because I, you know, I think Wikipedia doesn't work if there's not good sources out there. And in, in areas where, um, you know, particularly there's not a revenue model for smaller publications serving, you know, marginalized communities and they're relying on philanthropy. I think, you know, it's one of the things we can do is, you know, advocate to those who are funding journalism um, to really focus on marginalized communities. Looks like we've got another question from online. Yes, hello. Uh, so we got a question from the Zoom Q&A. This one comes from Jennifer Lee and is regarding um, what community foundation grants to the community. Uh, quote, as of the last round of rapid grants, tech funding has been entirely shut off, at least in North America. Are the trustees aware of this? We realize that falls between operational and strategic, but we believe the tools are a critical part of the community experience. For something this significant, do you think this should have been a part of an open discussion with the community? Yeah, hi, thanks for the question, Jennifer. Um, so my understanding, well, I shouldn't just say my understanding. So the, the situation with the grants is that um, for quite a long time, the foundation has funded technical work and there still are pieces of technical work that are funded, uh, but it is true that we are not offering specific technical grants at this time. So just make that, um, you know, just clarify and, and be clear in communication. Uh, and then, you know, looking forward to what we might think about doing in the future uh, around technology. And, you know, we had a good conversation at the North American Hub, uh, you know, session where folks were talking about the tooling needs of GLAMs in particular, but just broadly what tooling needs are. And I heard people say, you know, I know what I need. <laughs> what I need is for someone to just fund exactly that. Uh, and, you know, I know that there's several mapping projects occurring right now, the CSI project, and there's been, been others trying to figure out what the current set of tools are what the needs are, um, who the stakeholders and users are, and then how we might 
like move forward. So I just say I think it's like a pretty complex like situation and you know I, I've had conversations with Jennifer about the specific things that she thinks should be funded. Um, so that that's kind of where we're at um, and in terms of like what I am doing in the technology space right now one big investment that I'm making that started last year continuing this year is in the MediaWiki software itself which is the core this is the software that runs everything every single wiki is built on MediaWiki um, and it has a lot of problems and so for me a thing that needs to get sorted out is what is MediaWiki going to be going forward? What are the APIs that we're gonna support? And how do we form like a really strong base to build everything else on top of? So that's the investment decision that I've made. That was part um, of the annual planning process and an you know, open conversation about that leading into it. Uh, and I'll just say like, happy to have more conversations about why that's the path that we're on right now because I, I do think it's important you know to get feedback on that and you know and we can we can revisit these things obviously um, that's one piece and then I think um, the other part of this is we're trying to have a series of conversations about investments that we should make in commons uh, specifically um, and you know I just really invite folks to come to those conversations, um, you know, participate in Andrew Lee's research, you know, engage with these places where we're trying to map this giant ecosystem. Because I think we've produced a lot. There are many, many tools and many use cases that are being served. Um, and the reality of it is because we didn't start out with that sustainable base for those tools, we produced lots of really interesting stuff, but it's now in a state of really difficult to support. Um, you know, it's, it's just difficult to support now because we don't have that base of understanding of what everything is. So anyway, so that, that's kind of where things are at. It's, I just want to acknowledge it's messy. Um, and yeah, that, I don't know if I have any I don't know if I have any other things to share about that, but that, that's about it. Yeah, I think Jennifer's question acknowledged um, that, you know, these particular grants may fall, but somewhere between operational and strategic, and of course the board being in charge of strategy. But I'm thinking, Kathy, it might be helpful for people to understand, like, what is the level of granularity of finances that you're seeing in terms of what gets funded, and how are you advising on funding strategies um, now and into the future? Thank you. Um, I also wanted just to comment that I think um, Selena described a, a great example of trade-offs and choices in terms of how to spend money that um, has the greatest impact overall in terms of foundation and community and um, sustainability of, of platforms and going forward. Um, so the board does not get into that level of granularity in terms of individual grants. Um, we look at overall allocation, so how much of the budget's going to grants versus product and tech versus um, fundraising and administration and council. Um, you know, at, at one of our meetings, we looked at the growth in the grants budget over time and the regional distribution. So we've seen it at that level, but especially as the move through the pilot toward um, a more local based um, decision making on grant distribution, you know, the, I think the board's concern is, is wanting that to be effective, but not to second guess the decisions by any means. That's helpful, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, my name is James Hare. I have been a Wikipedia editor of approximately 20 years. And separately from that, I run a small business doing uh, Wikipedia analytics and engagement strategies. And one, there's, a, there's, an Achilles heel, there's an Achilles heel in the technical infrastructure of the Wikimedia Foundation and all Wikimedia projects, and that is BlazeGraph. BlazeGraph is a special type of database software used by Wikidata to basically be the data underpinning for all Wikimedia sites, including language links between articles and, 
and, um, and, and uh, data annotations for files on commons. And other than being a robust and thriving project in and of itself, it is also underlying technical layer for all Wikimedia projects. BlazeGraph is abandoned where it is no longer actively developed. The developers have long left for Amazon and this software is falling apart. It can no longer scale. We've had, uh, the foundation has had to resort to emergency measures to make sure that this system even works still. And at best, this buys us a couple years of time. And I'm bringing this all the way to the board because to engineer a replacement that meets our requirements for free and open source software, that would probably cost around 10 plus million dollars to build. And so far, the leading contender for the replacement for BlazeGraph is a project written by two graduate students. And I appreciate their work sincerely, but this is not a sustainable solution. And, the, and what I'm wondering is, does the foundation have any prospective partners for developing this next generation of database software? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, I I can I can take this. <laughs> I can I take this you one. Might, you might want yeah, to take yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, first of all, James, I just want to say thank you. And sorry, I can't um, talk. But, uh, you're you have a very it's Brian. Brian, I love you. Your voice carries. Um, <laughs> um, uh, just want to say thank you so much, James, for everything that you have done for the movement and your technical expertise. Like I deeply value it and everything that you said, I like mostly agree with might be some details I'd quibble about a little bit, but yeah, I think you're right about, you know, the relative scale of the investment that's going to be required um, to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so how do we, how do we go about that? So yeah, we've taken the first emergency measure, which was a very difficult decision to separate the scholia, you know, data, scholarly articles, um, from the rest of Wikidata to try to prop up like that, you know, uh, the, the query service. So we've done that. Uh, and now there is an architecture conversation that is ongoing to sort out like what the next step should be. There are several strategic decisions in that that need to be made. One is about the linked open data strategy and whether we have enough, um, whether we have anything that's safe to try that would actually support the ecosystem that has evolved in there. For those of you who don't know, there's a linked open data strategy associated with Wikidata that has um, separated data, but it hasn't made it possible to actually query across the different um, instances. So we're getting a lot of details there into the weeds, but that's kind of the current state. So in terms of next steps, like right now, we are working very closely with Wikimedia Deutschland to sort through like what you know, what is the future here? Um, they, uh, they have some ideas that they really would like to try. So that's kind of our, our first step. And, you know, if any of you have worked with Wikimedia Deutschland, they're like really engaged with the community. They're sharing, you know, their experiments. So you're, you'd be welcome to kind of engage there. And then I think there's another issue that we have to think about, which actually also affects commons which is what is our long-term data scalability strategy as these systems have grown quite a bit in the last, you know, definitely the last decade. There's been a lot of growth, but the last 20 years, of course. So, um, you know, so I, I just agree with you. And I have started thinking about the funding strategy for that. It's going to be some very big, you know, it's going to be some substantial trade-offs. But, I mean, that's, that is that is the work. Uh, so I, I'm... I don't know. I, I feel confident we're going to like figure it out. And again, we're like really partnering closely with Wikimedia Deutschland to figure out, you know, what the next like two years basically are going to be like. Thank you. Is that a quick follow up that you have? Uh, or uh, it was question? a follow up to Jenny's actually on, the, on a funding related matter that you, Elena, had brought up that I, I can just quickly make. Sure. A quick follow up of. and then we'll go back to the mic and then we'll go to Leanne over there. So you had had a, I think, had a question for the panel over sort of the kind of investments that have been happening recently around technology. So for folks who aren't aware, I'm the, I, I support funding uh, needs for the North America region, this one, as well as Central and Eastern Europe. And in those regions, we tend to receive uh, in North America around, um, uh, around like 20 to about 30 rapid funds each year in the last few years. 
in the Central and Eastern Europe region, it's larger, closer to around maybe 40 or 50 rapid funds each year. And just on the technology front of things, in terms of receiving proposals around software developments, uh, the number of proposals we receive is uh, vanishingly small. So it's perhaps zero to about two maybe proposals each year. So I'm only noting this because I just want to acknowledge that the kind of amount of funding we're investing into technology through this kind of niche you know, area of funding that we do right now is, is very small. So I just wanted to note that at the, for this time. Thanks, thanks for adding those details. Yeah, go ahead. Hey everyone, um, good to see so many friendly faces up there. I'm Kevin Lee, I um, use our L235 longtime English Wikipedian. Um, we're, it, you know, in 2017 we adopted these 2030 movement goals where, you know, by 2030 we'd be the essential infrastructure of free knowledge um, globally. And this question is for the three board members. And I was wondering if you could speak about, um, you know, within that goal, where do we think we're on track? And especially, you know, if you, if you want to answer just one question, like where, where are there alarm, go alarm bells going off for you? Like where, where are we not on track to be meeting that goal? I think I can fairly say I don't know where we're not on track. That's not necessarily to say we're on track for everything, because theoretically, we have until 2030, and this is 2024. I was part of one of the nine working groups that developed the 10 recommendations and 45, now 47 initiatives. So that's a whole lot of work that many of us are, are working on. I can probably touch on some of the things that I was involved in being on the community health working group. One of them was the universal code of conduct. That was our recommendation and it became our initiative and that's been implemented. IP masking was another one of ours and that's being worked on. I'm not exactly sure how far along we are, but I've heard some updates about it. Things like, um, uh, new editor training. I think we have things called Vibrance and uh, Let's Connect, and that's being helpful with that. So I can say that for a lot of things we're working on, and some of them were further along than we are in others, and maybe still there's some that we haven't even touched on, but I can't even tell you what we haven't touched on. I, it just feels like we're working, and when I say we, it's not, <laughs> I'm not talking six people, I'm talking about everybody in the room. We're all working on it. So being fair and saying, I, I, I don't think we're behind on anything. I think we're working in, in, you know, what's the right speed for us, even on things like MCDC, the Movement Charter is one of the 47 initiatives. Global Council, one of the 47 initiatives. Hubs one of the 47 initiatives. We're working on them and we're, you know, somewhere a little further along and somewhere less further along, but we seem to be working on them. And, you know, when we get to 2030, I can probably answer that question a little bit better. I don't mean to be, you know, evading or to be vague to you, but this is how I feel. So there, there is a diff post um, recently that, that kind of gives an update on the progress towards the, the movement strategy recommendations, the 47, that um, shows, shows where we're at um, in, in relation to most of them. And a surprising number are done. Um, you know, and there's, there's some that aren't, there's some that, you know, I, they are recommendations, right? And we do say that in five years, this might not make sense anymore. So there, there are some that I think might be taking on a new life, right, as time goes on and there's new challenges and new threats. Um, but most of them, I think we've made a lot of progress. So we can share that, that link out. And I think it's something we're going to be doing a little more regularly, just kind of posting um, progress towards those. 
Do you mind if I ask real quick, at more of a, like a vibes level than at a like a specifics level? You know, where, where do we think we're like? I guess I meant instead of the forty-seven like specific things, this like broader vision of like we we want to be on the right track to like be building the essential infrastructure of free knowledge, which I, hopefully is an easier question to answer. Although I don't mean to put anyone on the spot with forty-seven specific things. I didn't exactly, I'm sorry, I, I, my hearing isn't the best, so I didn't exactly hear it as a question. So do, do you feel like we're on track to this like broader goal of, you know, of Wikimedia serving as the essential infrastructure of the, of um, open knowledge on the internet or in the world? I would say yes, I would encourage you, um, all of you, if you've not read it, to see the the email that um, Darius um, recently sent earlier this week. He is chair of the governance committee. The governance committee is the committee of the board that's working most directly with the foundation on the mapping exercise. Um, CEO Mariana Iskander had a communication right after Wikimania that talked about this exercise. I personally um, sat in on the first session of conversation between the foundation and the governance committee um, where, you know, this is a really serious, um, well thought out effort to map areas of agreement, disagreement, um, areas of nuance, um, new information, and Darish's email, which I encourage you all to read and respond to, was asking for input as to um, ideas people had, other questions or contributions. So um, this isn't going to happen overnight, but I think it's a really thoughtful process to keep moving forward um, on these important goals. I know you asked this to the board, but let me let me just give some thoughts on knowledge equity and and knowledge as a service and 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 becoming the essential infrastructure, which I think you're talking about the 2030 strategic direction and and where we are where we are there. I mean, when I think about are we the essential infrastructure of free knowledge, um, you know, there, there's a few indicators that would say yes, right? Like that we didn't even anticipate. I think when we wrote that strategic direction, you know, we're 19% of the corpus of a lot of uh, large language models, right? So that infrastructure piece being the infrastructure of free knowledge, even some of those aren't free, right? Uh, but, but we are, we're kind of, the, the knowledge that is created, that's curated on Wikipedia is not just on Wikipedia, right? It, it, you see it all other places and all of the APIs that are used. Enterprise, I think, is a part of knowledge as a service. So we've made progress on not just having you know knowledge on a website but having knowledge woven into the to to kind of the knowledge ecosystem which i think is what it's all about on equity i mean you know are, do we have we achieved knowledge equity will we achieve knowledge equity by 2030 i mean no right i mean equity is a is a really really hard um hard objective but i think it's one that we try to hold ourselves to and and work towards I mean some indicators that I will say that that indicate that we are moving in the right direction is growth of the smaller wikis is investment you know the grants budget used to be entirely really uh, North America and and Europe and it's now more equitable around the world so we're seeing more more um, you know more organized communities uh, that are they're supported throughout the world. We're, we're def definitely taking Wikimania and those types of of, of engagements. Um, you know, to ne next summer we'll be in Africa, um, and we have regional conferences now. So we're engaging the communities um, everywhere around the globe, and I think in a much more robust way than we used to. So it's moving in the right direction. There's signs of progress. I mean, this kind of indicates that we got a lot of work still to do. Um, and, you know, I'm guessing that work's never going to stop. We're never going to get to a point where we're really happy with equity. I hope we don't. Um, but I think, I think there's some signs that we're moving in the right direction. 
Thanks, and thanks, Kevin, for the, the meaty question. It's taken us a little bit over time, but I think we have one more question left in the queue from Leanne. Yeah, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to be quick, and it actually follows on Kevin's question um, quite well here. So I was, um, like many of you, heavily involved in the development of the 2030 Movement Strategy. Um, and I think one of the things that has really stuck out to me in the last couple of years is how much the patterns of knowledge consumption have changed. And one of the things, since we created that strategic direction, since we engaged in the strategy process in the mid uh, 20 teens. Um, and Lisa made, just made a point about how, you know, it says you can change it in five years. I mean, I think the ecosystem we live in has changed pretty dramatically in the last 10 years since we started the process of developing movement strategy. I mean, especially looking at you know, TikTok and ChatGPT as two main drivers of knowledge consumption didn't even exist when we were creating the movement strategy process. So my question to the board is, is there a consideration for a refresh of movement strategy for sort of the final six years as we head, or five years as we head on the countdown to 2030? Well, I can take just like a piece of this and, you know, of course I want to over the board we like to say, but I'll, I'll say for those of you um, that were here for Mariana Pinchuk's keynote talking about the investment that we made in uh, future, future audiences, the board was part of that discussion and decision to allocate a portion of our budget specifically to be thinking about how do we reach these audiences. And then, you know, it's you know, up to the, the staff to figure out, you know, how do we then dig in and uh, make products, you know, that reach those new audiences and, and also uh, programs across all of the, the, the grant work that we do that are also like doing, doing the same thing. So there's like this, this alignment that we have to have across there. I think that's, that's one piece of it, but I'm curious if the board has any other thoughts to share. I'll make a quick comment and then pass it to someone else. One of the 47 initiatives is review, iterate, and adapt. And so it's built into the process. It gives us that opportunity where we think we need to zig or zag. We will zig or zag. I think we are zigging and zagging a bit. There are some concrete things like universal code of conduct where there's no zigging or zagging. We're going to have that, and we do have that, and that's going to continue. But I think we have that. To answer your question, are we thinking about it? Yes, we thought about it way back when, that we need to have an opportunity to review, iterate, and adapt. I feel strongly that we should stick to that and do that where we feel it's appropriate. One just, I think, follow on of specifically off of what Selena said, I think I would draw a distinction between the foundation's interpretation of the strategy and the affiliates' interpretation of the strategy. And I think the foundation has adapted and has done great work in in doing future audiences, but I think a call to affiliates more broadly, to communities more broadly, to make it not just driven by the foundation, but driven by the entire movement, is what the movement strategy is all about. And so I would absolutely agree with you, I think, within the foundation, you all are looking toward the future, you guys are working on that stuff, but I'm not seeing that broader call out from the board or from, um, from us as a movement to adapt to that beyond the foundation's own annual planning process. I think to Kathy's point, uh, both Dariush's most recent note of this week and what Marianne also put out once we had the voting and some of the board decisions around that, uh, I think reflects just that, right? Which is, to your point, what began in 2017 is very different in some ways now and a lot of macro things have changed. I think the path is going to be very Talmudic with a lot of twists and turns, but I think the direction of travel is actually pretty good. So I'm, I'm less, uh, from a board perspective, I think I'm less worried about that this will be organic. Uh, it might take a little longer. It may not be like uh, a step function, like a vote and it happens. So I think in, in that way, um, I'm actually feeling pretty confident about where we are headed. And just to kind of make the point further, uh, when I mentioned the email from Darius, he asked for comments on about five different things. And the very first one was external contact. So how have things changed or evolved? And he's looking for feedback. Um, and so the board will receive that. Yes. 
I think that's the end of our session. And what I want to do is thank you and give you a way of communicating further with us. If you could. AskCAC at wikimedia.org is a way that you can always communicate with us. That will get you directly to us, the board members. So please keep your questions, your comments, your ideas coming. We welcome them. Thank you very much for showing up for this session. Bye.